Hello, hello, hello. Jay Nell here, and we have a lot to talk about. So I know this video is late. I did make four picks for last week's, uh, last weekend's fight. Now, actually, I made more picks than that, but on the UFC event, only three of my picks actually made it through because some of the other fights got switched around and, you know, dropped out. And then I made a pick on Bellator 263 as well. So four picks of fights that actually went on, and I went two for two. Um, so real quick, again, you have to follow me on all platforms to get all of my content like that last minute Bellator 263 pick with that amazing main event right here in California. Hey, eh? um, so that is on uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, all those other platforms. Also, please go ahead and subscribe. Please hit that like button, the notification button. Go ahead and share the videos. Please go ahead and comment and all of that. Whew all that out the way now so out of the four picks first up on ufc fight night 33 i uh, chose brian barberini to be jason witt he did not this ended a majority decision in favor of jason witt with an amazing third round that went which is ferocious you have to check it out who would you like jason witt to fight next uh next up i uh, got that this pick i chose cheyenne I think it's Baze. I know it's not Baez. Girl, I'm sorry. Chose her to be Gloria DePaula, and she did in the first round. Uh, she They were in a grappling stance. She actually got on the ground, then she stepped back to let her up, and as soon as she got both hands, like literally, as soon as she got both hands off of the mat, she kicked her in the face. Blah! All jaw. Knocked her back to the ground, got on top with some serious, nasty ground pound. Elbows. Hard shots. You could feel them. Uh, refs off the fight great well, stoppage great win she had a great little speech she talked a little bit about her financial situation and she did get a bonus the fifty thousand dollar bonus and there's a video of her hearing that she got that bonus it's a very heartwarming video you should go check it out if you want to get a little heartwarming in there a little smile uh on the main who would you like to see her fight next on the main event i did not get this pick i chose uriah hall to beat sean strickland he did not sean strickland won every single round i knew it was gonna be a tough fight didn't think it was gonna i was like you're right you're gonna have to start first you have to be often you're gonna have to keep him at bay you're gonna have to keep him you know uh, uh, in space and he didn't do any of that sean strickland was able to smother him with offense on the feet and he was able to eventually get him down as well i think the second round was probably the best for uriah it was either the second third where he did manage to mount some offense but i think he even lost that round so this was a very dominant victory for sean strickland uh, who would you like to see him fight next i don't let me know if him versus the return of luke rockle if that's actually signed they've been drawn back and forth um i heard that it was was signed but let me know if it's actually been signed other than luke rockhold if that's not signed uh who would you like to see sean strickland fight next now um the other pick the fourth and final pick that i made and i did get i chose aj mckee to beat um pitbull patricio Ferreira, pitbull um for the bellator featherweight championship <laughs> <laughs> and this was for Bellator 263. This was the culmination also of the featherweight tournament as well. The winner of this also got $1 million. So I got this pick. This ended in the first round. Um, There's a little bit of back and forth, but then it was AJ who landed another kick to the face. Um, it staggered him. He ended up wrapping him up in a standing guillotine of which the ref stopped the fight. So a submission. However, uh, Pitbull did not tap. He just was non-responsive. Now afterwards, he did like seem to pop right back up and start to argue a little bit. But we do know that there is such a thing as like a flash knockout even in submissions where someone you, you fall out and then the, the moment that pressure is removed you wake back up so I'd have to see more angles on like his face in order to actually say you know the ref should have stopped it or not but he was non-responsive from what I had seen initially um, um, real time so this was a great win for AJ McKee. I think he's like 26 years old. He's got a nice little personality, nice balance of being confident without being cocky. Of course, he's got the story with his dad as well, being his coach from the time I believe he was like six years old all the way up until now. So they groomed him and he's actually become champion. He's a real Bellator, like homegrown star. Um, he, he's got all the factors. He's got all the factors. And then he talked about possibly defending the featherweight, but then he actually wants to hurry up and go up to lightweight because apparently the weight cut is hard for him. Um, so he wants to fight the other um, uh, uh, Patricky, the other pit bull brother. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to fight him up there. But then he also called out some UFC featherweights as well. Max Holloway, Alexander Volkanovsky. And he said Brian Ortega like choked him out when he was 19 or something. He's like, I got to get that back. Either way, uh, a great character, great addition to the fight world. Um, I like him. I like him. Check him out, AJ McKee. Uh, great. He's I think he's great for Bellator. Now, and I got all the recaps out of the way. I'm trying to get it out of the way. Let's get on to UFC. Um, 265 this is a pay-per-view 
is it still on pay-per-view or you just have to get the what's it called i usually watch them at bars and other people's houses so i don't even know if i'm paying for pay-per-views anymore either way this is not a fight night this is ufc 265 so let's go ahead and talk about my picks this is happening on saturday it's a stacked card um there was supposed to be two fights but we amanda nunez apparently came down with covid someone correct me if i'm wrong with that it's amanda who actually has covid i'm like oh anyway so um you know well wishes out to the lioness so um we're just getting the heavyweight title shot so let's go ahead and get into this uh first up i'm choosing casey kenny to beat song yudong first all these little fights here going back and forth on them like crazy choosing angela hill to beat tisha torres going back and forth on that i think it's gonna be a very exciting fight choosing vicente luque to beat um uh michael chiesa and i'm really going back and forth on this one i think michael chiesa will have the advantage on the ground and uh he can do like standing submissions he i don't even know if he's going to have the power advantage it might be equal there's going to be a lot of things i'm going to see right when they get in the ring i know that vicente is going to have a higher um offensive output and has better cardio and can hold it for a longer period of time he's going to press that pace and it's been michael who's had the cardio issues in the past he seems to have fixed that but with someone with the pace of a vicente luque and who's just got that natural brawl that controlled chaos I, the fight's gonna be good though let me tell you this one might be fight of the night. I think the whole card is going to be good, but I'm really looking forward to this one. Going back and forth, I'm probably going to have to see them on weigh-ins. How's the weight cut going for them and everything? But yeah, this is one. You got to follow me on all platforms because I might renege. <laughs> but for right now, Vicente Luque. Now, um, choosing Jose Aldo to beat Pedro Munez. This is another one where I'm going to have to do some research to see how Aldo's body's been holding up. You know, he's had a lot of nick nagging injuries for like the last few years. Plus all those in fight years, Jose's like 45. Um, he's a lot bigger than Pedro is though. And I was kind of surprised by that. And I think his skill level is higher, but I'm just going to have to see how his body's holding up, how the weight cut um, goes for him as well. But Jose Aldo. Um, is that the co-main event? Am I already? Oh, I think I'm already there. I am already there. All right. Main event. And we are seeing, this is the number two and number three, Derek Lewis versus uh, Cyril Gain. These are the big boys. And uh, man, let's go ahead and break this down because I'm going back and forth on this one as well. So the um, I thought that Cyril would be a lot longer than he is. He's actually not. He's got, uh, for, you know, it's different on each platform you see. There seems to only be like a one to two inch reach advantage on the hands. And it seems like Derek might even have a one to two inch reach advantage on the legs. So they're essentially the same length. Um, height, same thing. Cyril's only an inch taller than Derek. So that definitely made me change the way I thought about it a little bit because I it felt like Cyril would be longer, but I do believe that's because he fights longer. So that is a factor, the fighting styles, you know, with that kickboxing uh, background, he is the crisper, cleaner, and the more diversity in his striking. He has better kicks, although Derek does have kicks as well. Derek has more powerful kicks, and he's definitely got more power in the hands. Um, <sighs> Derek is going to be um, more offensive active i believe uh people call cyril a point fighter i think he's just a counter striker counter strikers often look like point fighters because they only they can't get anything if you don't give it to them right and so then they're forced to try to create something and that's not their style so they'll do things like leg kicks and jabs to try to get you to react to try to get you to open up so then they can respond right so if you have someone who doesn't open up it's going to be a point fight like with um um Adesanya and Yo Romero. So I haven't seen enough of him to call him a point fighter yet. I think he might just be a counter striker. And we'll see that here because I do believe Derek's going to give him something to respond to. Um, Derek's going to have to fight smart. I think he knows. I hope he's really, he said he's been cutting down and we've seen that throughout the last like year. He's going to have to be in the best shape of his life because uh, Cyril is an athlete. He is fit. He is strong. He is, um, 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 dynamic but the other word is i'm looking for is that he's, he's athletic he's athletic so um uh, uh, you know flexible than the average heavyweight these types of things he's athletic the way he moves um i think he's going to be faster although derrick lewis does have good quick hand speed um if it goes i think derrick might want to take him down honestly this might be one my derrick you might want to go to make him down 
And if you can get them to hold your body weight up against that cage, maybe you can zap some of that energy. Maybe you can hamper that movement. You've got some kicks too. We know you've been working on it. I believe Derek is probably going to show us something we haven't been seeing because he has been proving to us over these last like few years that he is getting better on a regular pace, trying to get to where he's trying to get to. So I do believe we're going to see a, a better version of Derek Lewis. Cyril, um, gosh, oh, who's going to win this fight? I see why the money's on Cyril. I see why. And um, again, he I do believe he possesses the tools to keep Derek at bay. Um, those kicks tear apart that lead leg. But if he goes in the counter striker mode, Derek might be able to overwhelm him. And again, Derek, you might want to take him down. So... I want to say Cyril Gain. I want to pick Cyril Gain. However, I don't want him to win. I don't want Cyril to win. I want Derek to win. I want Derek to get the next title shot against Francis Ngannou. Oh, let me go ahead and talk about that. I don't believe... Is this for the interim belt? And there shouldn't be one. Francis has only been out for like three or four months. And according to his camp, he just wants to fight in September and not this month. If that's true, this is ridiculous. Um, either way, four months isn't long enough there for there to be an interim belt, especially when you have a champ who's not hurt and we're just trying to negotiate things happening here. So there should not be an interim belt here, period, okay? And I also don't like the fact that Cyril's actually in this fight. I have nothing against him. I just don't think he should be here yet. Um, the heavyweight division is more exciting than it's ever been. And uh, you've got, he hasn't fought Blades, he hasn't fought Shamil, he hasn't fought Tibera. So there's fights in the top 10, in the top 7 that he actually hasn't even fought yet. He is fairly new to the UFC, quite new to the UFC. I do understand that he has that backing behind him, constantly pushing him, which is also part of the reason why he got put into this position so quickly. But he can wait. This is essentially what I, he can wait, he can wait. So I don't want him to win this fight. So let me just go ahead with, uh, it's hard for me to go with my heart because I want to pick Cyril. <laughs> I think he's going to actually end up winning by points. I think he's smart enough to not get caught by um, Derek Lewis. Um, unless Derek shows us some things we haven't seen before. Unless he takes him down. That's going to, that's a wild card there. He, I don't, I don't think he can avoid ground and pound. So, <sighs> Derek Lewis, I'm going with my heart. I want Derek Lewis to get it next. Cyril's young. He's like, only like 31. And in the heavyweight years, that's quite young um yeah you can wait Derek Lewis <laughs> okay next up um uh Stipe Miocic released this is according to Dana White has said he will accept a fight against John Jones um John Jones I last time I heard said he wasn't going to be fighting at all this year at heavyweight there's a big question mark there as far as money and saying that physically he wasn't ready so I don't know what's going on there of course we haven't heard anything from his camp as far as fighting Stipe so I don't know I just wanted to put that out there to y'all what do you think about that fight Stipe Miocic former champ versus John Jones and the winner that would obviously get the next title shot against uh Francis and whoever I guess he would fight out of the winner of this or would be the winner of this versus the winner of Derek Lewis's versus Cyril Gaon which means if it's Derek it would force him to fight another fight do you see what I'm saying so I, I don't like that this interim belt's happening in the first place. This is causing a mess, and it's unnecessary. So I just, ugh. But anyway, so what do you think about a possible um, Stipe voices versus John Jones? And if so, then what? What's next? Right, right. And then also, finally, last but not least, uh, I touched on Simone Biles uh, last week, and I just wanted to do a little update on Simone Biles. She did end up competing in one event, the Beam, and she ended up getting a bronze medal. So after all of those things, and her camp backed her up, even in her bronze medal performance on the Beam, she's supposed to do a double twist, double flip, and they t they did took out one twist, and then last minute the coaches told her to take out both of them because they were not confident in how she was landing it. So this whole twisties thing and her getting lost in the air appears to be real backed up by her entire team her entire team who she not only supported the entire time while she was out but her entire team who also supported her doing this exercise and who was literally in tears watching her perform very proud of her also proud of the other ladies who not only got that silver like i said before or got that silver which is the best they could do um two of them went on to get gold of their own Okay, so the and they said it themselves. They said we know Simone gets most of the attention, but this was our chance to show why why we're here, and they did that. So congratulations, ladies, and um, congratulations to Simone and all y'all still on her back. Leave that girl alone. All right.
<laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> I think that I, I think I do think that is it. So uh, let me know, of course. Um, sorry about the late recaps, but let me know how you did all your picks for UFC 33 and Bellator 263, which the whole event was actually good, happening the same time as the UFC. Although it did start an hour later, so they made sure that that um, main event didn't have anything to compete with. So, and of course, let me know what you think about AJ McKee and him winning that belt and all of that for Bellator. Let me know your picks for UFC 265, which is happening this Saturday. I will be looking at the prelims, to, and so I'll be possibly doing um, extra picks because I know this entire event is stacked. So again, you gotta follow me everywhere. Um, so uh, yeah, the picks. Let me know what you think about this heavyweight division situation, especially possible outcomes with this main event. If we do get Stipe John Jones, what should happen with France? France, <laughs> it's just the entire situation. And also, of course, let me know what you think about the Olympics in general, but an update, of course, on the situation with um, athlete mental health and uh, Simone Biles and the lovely ladies who rose to the occasion. <sighs> yes. All right. Talk to me. Subscribe, like. Talk to me. Take care. And goodbye.